Hello everyone, Yossi Stetner here for GestetnerUpdates.com. With us here today is Mr. Jack Abramov, the author, the author of the book Capital Punishment, The Hard Truth About Washington Corruption from America's Most Notorious Lobbyist. How are you today, sir? Very well, thank you. That's good. Uh, let's get straight to it. My first question. Uh, you know, I'm not uh, a great book reader, but um, how are sales of your book uh, coming along? Uh, it certainly made a lot of waves recently, probably a month ago, uh, regarding the insider trading issue. Right. Well, the uh, the book is doing well. Um, you know, obviously every author wants uh, his book to do better and better, so I'm hoping it continues. Yeah, it's. It, 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 I think if, if I think it would be correct to say that the Washington insiders, everybody inside the Beltway, picked up uh, this book. Is that uh, you know, the feedback that you've gotten? I think that's probably pretty accurate. Uh, I don't know how many of them, uh, uh, when they picked it up, didn't smash it onto the ground, but, uh, <laughs> but a few of them picked it up. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, um, one of the, the the things where I think it, it, it gets addressed, at least indirectly, through your book, or probably from your book, people can get that sense is the question that many people have, and, and is this, how is it that people who are poor, they're not, you know, overly well-to-do, they get elected to Congress, quote-unquote, to serve the public, but within a decade, these people turn out to be multimillionaires. Uh, you know, how, how does it work, at least in a legal way? Well, it's not always in a legal way, but unfortunately, there are plenty of loopholes in the law uh, for these guys, so whether it's the insider trading thing or it's the grant of special options and uh, friends and family stock, and a whole host of different ways. It just came out in the uh, paper today. They released the report from uh, Congressman Isis committee that some of these congressmen got sweetheart deals from uh, the uh, countrywide. Countywide, uh, countrywide, the, yeah. Uh, which big loan uh, is now owned by Bank of America for special loans and things like that, and that's what you see is going on too often in Washington. So, uh, you know, give us an idea how how would it work? Take somebody who was on a banking committee or some oversight committee regarding uh, countrywide. Um, they would get a deal better than your average guy in the street can get, and in return, you know, is it explicitly, unexplicitly, self-understood? How how does the company get the favor in return? Well, I mean, the companies uh, themselves are looking for support by the Congress and for uh, support in terms of the regulations and the other uh, oversight that the Congress has, that they're hoping the uh, the rules will be written favorably. And so whereas other lobbyists might give campaign political contributions and uh, take a congressman on traveling and uh, doing other things like that, uh, apparently these guys were involved. We don't have all the details yet, but apparently they were involved in conveying uh, uh, sweetheart loans to these guys. We already saw that Senator Chris Dodd uh, was involved in this. Yeah. As well as uh, Dolphus Towns, who is another uh, another one, but apparently there are others too. Yeah, uh, uh, he's Ed Towns from uh, New York Ten in, in in Brooklyn. Right. Um, uh, how put? A, I think you would be the best person to describe it. What would be the difference? And it, it may be, you know, uh, a kindergarten question, but I think many people do wonder. And a simple answer: What's the difference between lobbying versus pure bribery? I understand pure bribery is a, hey, um, where, where can I leave this envelope of money and, and out lobbying doesn't work this way. But a lobbyist, at the end of the day, knows how to, uh, you know, push public opinion in a certain direction, knows how to drive contributions. So what's that difference between uh, bribery? You know, isn't this a form of legal bribery? Well, I think, I think that the answer is yes. Uh, just like, you know, we learn uh, with Kozal teaches us that uh, Shokhat, basically could be, uh, they have in the case with Shmuel, mm -hmm. if you remember Rob Shmuel crossing the bridge, somebody holds his arm up, uh, who's coming to his court, yeah. and he's declared to have bribed them. Yeah. So similarly here, you have people who are constantly providing uh, contributions, and uh, they're not coming in with a sack of money, saying, here's $50,000, go vote my way. They're, they're right. hey, let's go to dinner, or let's uh, go to a ball game, or let's be involved, to, uh, go on a travel together. Let me yeah, let me pick up that dinner for you. Let me pick up that uh, ticket for you. It's little things here and there that are uh, that are offered as acts of friendship. But the truth is, at the end of the day, it's bribery. Mm -hmm. um, who is? <laughs> I like this question, which I wrote for you. Who is the most corrupt politician you ever dealt with? Um. I don't know. It's hard. To, it's hard to peg somebody like that, you know, because uh, most of them. Don't forget, most of these guys are not acting in a way that was evidently corrupt, even to me. Uh -huh. at the time. And most of them don't think they're corrupt, by the way. 
they think that they're they think that they're you know they're acting like people act in Washington and they don't stay, take a step back and realize that it's a problem. So I don't know that any of them think or not uh, hardly any of them think that they're very corrupt. Obviously uh, there are corrupt people like uh, Congressman Cunningham who had a menu of prices uh, that people could pay him and he would do certain things. Yeah. Uh, he had others like uh, even Bob May who was involved in my case. He uh, didn't seem like a very corrupt guy, but he was involved in taking uh, casino chips from some Iranian party uh, who wanted to get permission to uh, buy airplanes or something. Yeah. Uh, so uh, those two, I think, if if I have it correctly, they got convicted in a court of law. But right. in the court of, of, of Mr. Abramov, who was in Washington for a long time and shook Washington, or shall I say more correctly, you probably controlled uh, much of Washington in many ways. Um influence uh, influence why well, certainly who would you know, maybe the, this person is a former who would be who would fit that mold and say okay that guy uh, I wouldn't say on the you know li on the books by the court of law he's corrupt but he certainly is in that territory would you name anyone well I'm trying to avoid getting into individuals like that and the reason I am there's a couple of reasons first of all I don't want to ruin somebody's life uh -huh. you know, who uh, who has already uh, you know got the issues and things like that I mean what I went through I uh, wouldn't want to have, have anybody but number two the problem is that when we focus on individuals like that people don't ever get the system fixed if they feel that you know if they can go get that guy and everything becomes about that guy then when they get him you know they throw him away and go in prison or wherever it is that they fixed up things and that's never what happened so what I try to do in my book is not get into that. It's not right. even a matter of a uh, Lajanara thing. It's, it's basically just practicality, that by focusing on individuals, we wind up missing the real point, which is that there's always going to be people doing it until we fix the system. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, 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 it's a fair answer. I, you know, I, I remember uh, your case when it blew up, I think, in 2007. Um, uh, people certainly, uh, some columnists, you know, uh, th this is the, the impression that they try to sell the public, you know, oh, once we have, once we got uh, Jack off the street, everything will be kosher, and I don't think, I don't think that uh, things in Washington don't trade differently than five years ago. Um, but um, I want to ask the question, but it, it, do you think that there is one party more willing, you know, to work with the lobbying system? And again, you say that overly, overtly at least, it, it comes across legal, and people don't think they're doing anything corrupt, it's just they get influence. This is what Shurka does. Shurka doesn't necessarily mean um, that the person knows that he got something, but uh, this is how it works. Do you th would you say that one party is more willing to work with, you know, to, to twist their positions and opinions based on lobbying than another, or it's just uh, case by case and, and, and you can't make that distinction? distinction? Well, I think, it's, I think it's case by case, and I think uh, the problem is it's so widespread uh -huh. that it's not, first of all, it's not due to Shurka. All right, but these guys, it's yeah. viewed as, oh, that's the way the system works. That's how you do, that's how you play. Yeah. And when you have that attitude, and I'm talking, if people have that attitude, some of the people who consider themselves the most fine uh, people there yeah. have that attitude. Uh, that, you know, people say, for example, oh, look, nobody's buying my vote for a $2,000 contribution. Yeah. They don't understand the essence of Shaka. They don't understand what's going on there. And if you remember the example I raised with Rob Schmoll, who continues to talk about it, it says he went to court and he started listening to the case and he started rooting for uh, for the, the, the one fellow who helped him uh, across the bridge. And he was saying, you use this argument, use that argument. And there's no way that a, a person who has any, any soul can receive things from people and not feel gratitude and not feel uh, some sort of favoritism toward them. Even if they, at the end of the day they don't change their vote, it's improper. Uh -huh. but, but is it any other? How else would Washington run? You know, to well, be honest basically, with you, it, people, people need to make their case based on the merit of their issue. Members of Congress and their staff need to listen to the various proponents who come to them and to make the case based on the merits and make the case based on the philosophies and what they believe. Um, and I think that one of the things I propose is the lobbyists and the people that they represent would not be allowed to raise money politically, would not be able to give money politically. And if they can't give money politically and you take it out of there, then I think you can overcome some of the problem. Uh, but certainly, you certainly will, but then, of course, the question becomes, why would uh, a politician A listen to person B instead of person C? Uh, what does this person bring more than the more than the other person? Every politician looks for survival. Everybody in business looks, you know, to to survive the next day or to be in the next term or to win another contract. 
And if you take that out, although it's, you know, it certainly is a correct way to do, you know, um, I guess it will be a little bit, uh, you know, tough to sell your product. I don't know, I guess you, you'll use them public relations. Um, how, yeah. Yeah? You use, you use uh, arguments. You, uh. you do like you do when you go to court. Uh, you know, uh, you use arguments. You don't show up to the court and say, here, judge, here's some tickets to the ball game. <laughs> <laughs> right? You use your arguments. You make your arguments. All right, well said. Really okay. Um, the next question to you is this. Uh, this may certainly sound like a conspiracy, but do you feel or think that the hammer came down on you uh, five years ago because someone in a powerful place decided to take you out? Did you step maybe on somebody's toes and decided, you know what, I'm going to get even with him and let's, and let's start moving things against them? Yeah, it could be that, but you know what? It doesn't matter because the thing is, I did things that were wrong, and um, you know, if I didn't put myself in a position, then maybe nobody, uh, nobody would have done it. I don't really focus on that because, first of all, in life, I, I generally don't focus like that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the truth is, uh, by me, uh, I, you know, this came from the Kaddish Baruch Hu. I mean, this, this, uh, this, uh, what happened was because of me, and it wasn't. They, they didn't have the power to do it. I mean, the, you know, the, the only power to do what happened to me came from above, yeah. and so it, it was it was right and proper, and I accepted it, and I'm trying to make uh, the best of it for my life and try to move on. Uh huh. Uh, it's an uh, interesting response. I, I, I'm wondering sometimes because I've many times followed um, cases uh, that consu consume the Orthodox community, Rabashkin, or other cases smaller or larger and people jump to conclusions in terms of um, in terms of uh, painting a person guilty uh, of a crime how uh, you know I, th I think the question better would, you know the follow up would be how do you feel when, when all the people who are you know quote unquote your best friends took your favors but abandoned you the, the day things started going wrong I think it's perhaps two questions first um as somebody who went through the system, how did you feel, how did you respond to what do you say to this thing that officially in the United States people are innocent until proven guilty, but then again people get destroyed in the media and the public, certainly Dominic Strauss-Kahn had that, um, you know, without even the chance to defend themselves correctly. And secondly, how do you feel, uh, you know, all the people who trusted you, worked with you, suddenly things started thinking around you and poof, they disappeared and they, no, no one was around to be, uh, no one was there to be found. Well, um, First part of the question being that um, wait, wait, give me it again. <laughs> I the first, first question, question was: uh, the, how, how, as someone who went through the system, that people convict uh, others uh, just by uh, accusation. Uh, right. All right. So, so in, look, in America, that's what happens. Okay. People uh, read something and they hear about it. And not just America. America is all over the world. People love to think somebody did it. Okay. Uh, they're, they're raised culturally like that here. And so, as soon as you're accused of something, you're guilty. And unfortunately, in America, uh, once they come for you, uh, you know, the truth is you're almost certainly going to wind up being guilty because the odds of surviving the court system are very long here. It's very difficult. Uh, so, that, in terms of that, that is what it is. You know, no. I mean, I didn't, I, I never sort of sat back and lamented that. That's what it is. Uh, it's unfortunate. Uh, people, especially in my case, felt like they knew all about me and my case, and nobody, nobody knew anything. anything. Mm -hmm. All right, nobody knew anything. Mm -hmm. They were getting a very uh, partial uh, portrayal of my case in the media uh, by uh, put out by Senator McCain and his staff, and uh, that's what they got to know about me. And they made their own images of me, and you know, it is what it is. And that's one of the reasons I wrote my book to show them that I'm not this monster with a tail and horns, but I'm a regular person. Know, uh, who, who went through life and made some choices that I shouldn't have, but I'm not some evil guy. Uh, so anyway, that that as far as that goes, that's that's what that is. In terms of the friends uh, turning, the truth is, uh, I tr I try to focus on the friends who stayed, which were many many more than the ones who left. The people who left, for the most part, were politicians. But as the Mishnah tells us in Pirkei the politicians are there when you when they need you, and when you need them, they're not there. Yeah. So there should not have been any surprises. You know, in terms 